Hi everyone! This week I'm going to introduce you to some of the main greenhouse crop categories that we'll be covering throughout the course of this semester. Some of these categories do um, cross over with some plants perhaps belonging to more than one category, but this is how we are going to break them up for now and we'll be studying many of these crop varieties um, in detail throughout the course of the semester. So we'll be focus on, focusing on bedding plants, cut flowers, vegetables grown in greenhouses, often known as hothouse vegetables, cannabis production, um, orchid production here and there, and other specialty flowers, ferns, and house plants. So let's dive in with bedding plants. When we think of bedding plants, we think of this picture below here. Small, often flowering plants planted in large groups in backyards, gardens, and some indoor nursery centers as well. The idea being that we're focusing on a kind of broad swath of color rather than individual specimens, individual stems of flowers or something like that. So uh, the bedding industry is huge, particularly in the U.S. It accounts for about 40% of the U.S. wholesale greenhouse production market. So uh, when we think of bedding plants, it's the temporary planting of fast growing plants into flower beds to create colorful temporary seasonal displays. Um, fast growing is an important element to the bedding plant industry. These crops are grown relatively quickly in greenhouses and then meant to be producing very quickly at home in the home garden. They're often bought when already in flower. So we're typically dealing with annual plants or tender perennials, meaning that they would die out in the winter. So in cool climates, they're planted every year, even though they might actually be a perennial plant. They're in fact uh, killed out after the warm season. Impatiens, petunias, geraniums, um, marigolds, there's a whole range of crops grown with this purpose, but those are some of the key players. They're sold in many different size containers in the industry, anywhere from 32 cell trays. So we'll be talking about cell trays a lot throughout this course, but the trays are named according to how many individual cells they have in them. So a 32 cell tray is pretty chunky. Large cells that you can, um, with large transplants, that you can pot up into bigger containers at home, or you can plant them right into the garden. And uh, so bedding plants often start out that small and then are grown up through six inch pots. If you see the top right picture here, those are four inch pots. So those are ready to go. Next, let's dive into my favorite, which is cut flower production. So in this course, we'll be talking about greenhouses used to grow basically flowers that are grown full through cut flowering stems that are then cut and sold directly out of the greenhouse production, but also greenhouses that are used to produce small transplants of cut flowers sold in trays or pots to then plant at home or on the farm and grow out yourself. So here we have some mums on the top left. We'll talk about mums as they're a very interesting crop. They're very day, day length sensitive. So um, there's a lot you can do in a greenhouse to manipulate the environment and the light to get mums to either grow or flower. Um, then we have lily production in crates on the top right, and on the bottom we have lisianthus production, which is a really great long-lasting flower, uh, produced a lot better in greenhouses than it is in the field. So it's a big greenhouse crop. I highly recommend the book um, Flower Confidential by Amy Stewart. If any of you are interested in just learning about the international cut flower market, how it's changed over the years, and how different um, trade agreements, namely with South America, have changed, um, changed the course of imports and therefore the domestic cut flower market. We'll also spend time talking about vegetables grown in greenhouses, sometimes otherwise known as hothouse vegetables. Um, you can see here the U.S. food crops grown under protection. Um, the main crops grown in the U.S. in greenhouses, for eating purposes rather, are cucumbers, herbs, lettuce, peppers, strawberries, tomatoes. We'll talk about why that is. Um, 
and how these different crops are grown, what characteristics are similar and different between the different crops. You can see here some pictures of greenhouse production on the bottom. I believe this is from the Netherlands, which is kind of leading the way in, um, in a lot of greenhouse production methods. Greenhouses are expensive, as we'll talk about throughout this course. So farmers often think of it as a really a high value space where they have to grow high value crops. So you can see here that these tomatoes are trellised up to make uh, best use of the space also to, to make best use of the growing environment in order to get proper airflow and all that, which we'll talk, we'll talk about as well. These other pictures show some indoor kale, which is um, probably grown in this hoop house in order to extend the growing season. So to get a jump on spring or to extend the fall. And then I believe we have some cucumbers in the other picture here. But it'll always come back to thinking about efficiency of space, space, how to um, optimize the environment for the particular plants and control against pests and diseases. Um, and when we think about growing greenhouses and vegetables, we'll come back to thinking about the quality of the plant, um, how predictable the timing of the crop is, and the fact that greenhouse growing can really allow consistent availability. In the second half of this course, we'll have a whole class devoted to cannabis production in greenhouses. And I know that some of you specialize in this, so I'll be looking forward to seeing how we can utilize the knowledge of the people right here in our class to uh, provide a more in-depth picture to some of our other students. But we'll start to talk about the differences between growing indoors and outdoors. For this purpose, we're thinking about cannabis production indoors that allows year-round production and multiple harvests throughout a year rather than just one harvest that you might have in the fall if growing outdoors. Uh, greenhouses also provide the tremendous benefit of being able to utilize the sun's energy, but then also leverage infrastructure and technology to manipulate the light environment. There's also, of course, drawbacks to any crop, to any greenhouse system for growing specific crops. So high energy costs, the need for high fertilizer inputs and really um, focusing on ventilation and how to control it. Orchids are a really interesting crop with really specific demands. So we'll learn a little bit about orchids throughout the course of this class, but they're a really good example of um, a crop that kind of has a high barrier to entry in terms of learning how to grow it. So in many cases, Greenhouses that produce this really do specialize in this one crop. Uh, orchids are highly manipulative and we'll learn that they're started in hot and humid environments to initiate initial vegetative growth of the plant. And then when it's time to induce flowering, they're moved to a cooling stage with um, increased light. Throughout recent times, there's been a movement to more mass market production as improved automation has allowed greenhouses to really dive into orchid production, um, leaving a real space in the market for very niche varieties of orchids to continue to be grown by the, the masters. They're grown by tissue culture, which uh, we'll touch on a bit in this course as well. Fern production is really interesting to look at as it's a really good contrast between most of our other crops and that it needs shade for production. Humidity and shade are often a fern's best friend. And there's a lot of there are a lot of interesting reads out there about the growth and the changes in the fern industry in Florida. I've linked to one article here. House plants are all the rage right now. Uh, there's a real growing trend for bringing nature indoors, which I'm all for. And they say that millennials have really helped to fuel the growth of the houseplant industry in recent years, which is really fascinating if you think about it. Here's an interesting read about, about the growth of the industry in general. Um, houseplants are propagated by a number of methods, including by seed, terminal cuttings, leaf cuttings, stem cuttings, division, and air layering. 
we'll get to explore some of these methods and even um, do a houseplant lab at home. And finally, here are some interesting statistics for you to look over. This comes from a survey of 300 large greenhouses across the country. On the right, you'll see the breakdown of uh, the crops they grow. And then on the left here, an answer to a question regarding the growth of sales since COVID began and which um, production categories have seen the biggest growth. Thanks, and I look forward to diving into these all more with you.